Hello everyone. Welcome to the lab class. From this class, you will learn what is SysDiff and how to use SysDiff to capture system events. Also, you will learn how to use causality analysis to analyze the logs to infer the dependencies of the auditing events and present the dependencies as a directed graph. First, uh, let's look at the SysDiff. You can check it out from their GitHub website. What is SysDiff? SysDiff is a universal system visibility tool with naive support for containers. Basically, you can use SysDiff to capture system events so that uh, later on, you are able to identify attacks from the system events. Scroll down a little bit on the setup section. Here is the install system description. So note that um, if you're using Windows or Mac OS, you probably cannot take full advantage of system. So if you want to take full advantage of system, you better to install VirtualBox on Windows or Mac OS. So um, here I will show how to install SysDiv for Linux. There are two ways to install SysDiv. I recommend this way because this is the easiest way, but feel free to check the manual installation if you want to know how to identify those um, parameters. And then after you install SysDiv, you can just explore the log that SysDiv capture. The simplest way is to just type SysDiv, then you should be able to see the event number, event time, event CPU, process name, thread ID, event directory, event type, and event arguments because those are the default settings of the system, so you don't need to identify them. Um, note that in the event arguments, you sometimes you will see FD. The FD means file descriptor, and this is a file name. So this event means the process write the write to this file. Feel free to check out those details. And uh, one thing I want to mention is a powerful feature that Steve has. Filter ring. The filters are specified at the end of the command line, like in TCP dump, and can be applied to both a live capture or a capture file. So, for example, if you only want to see cat process, you can apply this filter at the end of the line. Then other events will be filtered out. So you can only see the cat process be captured in SysDiv log. The output customization happens with the dash p command line in a uh, line flag and work somewhat similarly to the C printf syntax. Here's the example if you want to output user comma, username, blah blah blah, then you put dash p and uh, quote user, then the percentage user.name, so something like that, then you can customize your output.
This is a concrete example of the system command line. This is also a command line that I use in the demo. The red section defines the format, green section is a filter, and the blue section is an output file that contains the system logs. Before I show demo, I want to briefly talk about the graph generation. Since the demo will read the sysdig log and output dot file, but dot file is not easy to understand. In order to visualize it, you will need to install graphics so that you can use its command line dot uh, dot dash t svg to convert the file to svg file and the svg file can be visualized in your web browser so it's very convenient and graphics is open source graph visualization software and here is its website you can download it from their website and install so i'll skip this part it's pretty easy now let's go to the demo. You can see under uh, we can see okay. This case one txt is a cystic log file. Uh, it was captured when I ran uh, attack mockups. So it contains both normal events and attack events. The parser program will parse this uh, case one txt and output a dot file so that you are able to see um, to see the graph to understand it better. Let's see. Let's run the pattern. Oh, first we can see how the case one txt looks like. This is a event number, event second, event number second, and the process right ID, um, event direction. This is um, event type. These are uh, event arguments, and uh, this is exe path. So, and then the parser program will pass this txt file and output a dot file. And later on, we we'll use the graph to convert dot file to svg. Then uh, we can see them in our uh, web browser. Let's run it first. See. The puzzle is a Java application. So it, it takes a log file as input. Log file is as you Case one dot txt and uh, the output graph is arranging one block output graph and then we run it. These are some uh, debug information so can ignore them. Okay, it's done. Let's see how big the arranging dot file is. Uh, 
as you can see, it's a little bit big. So, um, we'll see. The G. It will take some time to convert. So as it's converting, let's go back to. Uh, I want to show you the attack mark apps. So basically, uh, this attack mark apps contains several attack scenarios. For example, it used wget to get this Python script from Dropbox to the uh, vulnerable server. So this is a wget executable attack scenario. Um, and then it moved this downloaded script to a different directory. This is a hide file attack scenario. Um, the goal of the attacker is to hide this malicious file among the user's normal files. Then, sorry, then it executes this browser's scripts. Um, then this call other scripts will call other two Python scripts. One is this write home script. This is um steal information attack scenario the attacker steals the user's sensitive information and writes the information to this passive.txt file and uh, the other script is python write random data this is an annoying server user attack scenario so the annoying user logs into other users home directories on the vulnerable server and writes some garbage data to other users' directory. And finally, it generates 100 fake files on this <laughs> under the directory. So this case one contains several text and arrows. We'll see. So it's done. Now it's still running. So yeah, it will take time, but I've already converted the uh, orange one dot to orange one SVG and downloaded it to our local to to my local. I'll show it to you. Let's download. No here. Oh, it's charged. Yeah, here we go. And we can see it's pretty messy because is generated by a whole sysdiv log this is not easy to identify attacks so in order to identify attacks we will perform causality analysis on this arranging one as we uh, graph and then we do a backtrack let's see the backtrack graph I'll stop it because it will take time Backtrack normally starting from a point of interest entity. Could be a file, could be a process. In this demo, I will identify the file as a point of interest.
compared to the last command, we just identify the point of interest file, log file, and keep the log file and our paragraph. Yeah, we need to rename our paragraph as well. So we name it as um, sidetrack. Sidetrack. This file is a uh, um um a file that we suspect. Let's see, yeah. And we run it. Then we can check out the file size. It's pretty small compared to the orange file. And then we use PSVG to convert it to SVG file. Backtrack. There we go. Now compared to Orange One and SVG, it's much much clearer. Then we can identify our point of interest is this red. So it's random this is a garbage data that the attacker write to the user's directory and we can see this was generated by python 3 specifically from here python from this script write random data and then we backtrack we keep on backtrack we can see that This is a co-authors that we downloaded from Dropbox using wget and then we move it to a different directory to hide it and then this co-authors will call uh, other two Python scripts one is write random data the other is the other probably we don't have it because I it's not the the file is not our point of interest anyway so from this uh, much much smaller SVG file backtrack SVG file we can easily identify the attacks Um, I think that's all for today's lab, so I'll show the slides, so feel free to read those uh, details of the system, and uh, yeah, I think that's all for today, thank you.